Welcome to Wheels Boy. The mad minds over at the joint venture between America's General Motors and China's SAIC have produced some of the most compelling mini electric vehicles that we have reviewed. I'm thinking of things like the original Wuling Mini EV and the new Baojun Yep. But now, they have set their sights on a slightly larger segment. Meet the Baojun EQ100, an all-electric compact MPV. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Quick note on the name of this car. I've been referring to it as the EQ100, but you're probably also going to hear people call it the Yundu or Cloud. That's because the Chinese name, as you can see written here, is Yundu, which means a group of clouds or something like that. So calling it Cloud in English does make sense. Wikipedia calls it the EQ100, though, so that's what I'm going to call it. Whatever you choose to call it, the EQ100 is priced between 13,500 and 18,500 US dollars. Maybe it's just because I'm American and in my native land we don't really have a lot of compact MPVs, but this thing immediately strikes me as being very uh, European looking. French, even. Maybe something that would come from Citroën. Perhaps it's the bulbous bumper area like this? I don't know. Also, this upper DRL really reminds me of a Lee Auto. The whole thing looks a little bit Lee Auto, just uh, squashed a lot. The EQ100 is definitely on the smaller end of the compact segment with a length of 4.3 meters. That makes it about uh, 10 centimeters or so longer than a BYD Dolphin, but it has the same 2.7 meter wheelbase. I refer to it as an MPV as, as you can see, it has a kind of tall roof taller than the hatchback shape of a dolphin, for example. Even the design on the back here, I don't know, it just, it feels, it feels French. I don't know what it is about it, but I will say that the exterior design language on this car is known as interstellar geometry. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I hate math. Next up, let's talk about rear cargo space. One of the things that cars from the joint venture brands of SAIC and GM have in common is surprisingly large amounts of space and this thing is no different. 400 liters of space with the seats up, 1,710 when you lay them down. Much like the Wuling Bingo from the same joint venture company, this thing has a cartoonishly large lower cargo area underneath this board. Just, oh, look at that. I'm about to dislocate my shoulder. The interior of the EQ100 is very minimalist. I mean, there are literally, apart from one button down here for your electrically operated emergency brake, no physical buttons in this car, at least on the center console and on the dashboard. Everything is contained in this big 15.6 inch center screen. Now, the very base car has a 10.1 inch screen, but everything above that is this 15.6 inch screen. Now, is the UI on this 15.6 inch screen any good? Well, I'm not gonna say that it's terrible, but first of all, I think it looks a little bit cheap, especially in this light mode. And then I'm not really a fan of how they've designed the menus. The layers are a little bit too complicated. They're kind of trying to reinvent the wheel in a way that doesn't really make it easier to use. Apart from that, however, the design overall is really quite pleasant. I love the color palette, especially on the inside of this particular car. We have these nice, soft faux leather, of course, seats, and a dark green. That's complemented by some pewter-colored things on the uh, center console here, as well as this, um, I don't know how to describe it, um, tortoise shell colored candy cane look. It's not tasteful, but it works. It's all, you know, hard plastic, but there's also some nice soft touch areas. Uh, take the dashboard up here, for example. It's in that lovely green color and it's got these great gold accents for a very useful cup holder that you've got there and 
over there on the passenger side as well. That's not the only feature. Here between the seats, you have a wireless charging pad, and then everything else is buried up here in the menus of the screen. That includes a 360 degree camera. The rear seats on the Baldwin EQ100 have, as you can see, some incredible levels of space. One, two, three, four fists for me. I'm five foot nine or 1.75 meters tall. The seating position is pretty good. These seats are not, a, oh wait, they do have adjustable rake. Look at that. Seriously, one of the more comfortable vehicles that I've driven in this size category, probably among the most comfortable vehicles. Here, fold down armrest, cup holders, and a single USB port right there. A final note when it comes to the interior, it feels light and airy, and one of the reasons for that is this very big optional overhead glass. Do you want to buy this or any other Chinese vehicle? We can help by connecting you with a reliable exporter of Chinese cars. Reach out to us via email at sales at wheelsboy.cn to learn more. This is a modestly priced vehicle and it therefore has modest levels of power. 100 kilowatts and 200 newton meters of torque from the single front mounted electric motor. That level puts it between the entry level BYD Dolphin with 70 kilowatts and the top spec with 130 kilowatts. 100 kilowatts means it has enough power to be uh, peppy off the line, but it's definitely not as quick as a BYD Dolphin because it's larger and heavier. The official 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time is. Actually, who knows, because Baljun has not released an official 100 km per hour time. I mentioned that there's certain things that cars from the GM, SAIC joint venture brands have in common, one of them being that space. The other is the fact that a lot of them drive like golf carts. That's due in large part to the fact that they're very, very small and cheap. This car is also quite cheap, but it's noticeably larger than those cars, especially the wheelbase. That means that the ride is considerably better. I would go so far as to say that it is as comfortable, if not more comfortable, than a BYD Dolphin. It rides much more softly, at the very least. That does come at a cost, however. This thing does not handle as well as the Dolphin, and that's frankly not a very high standard. Much like the Baojun Yep that we reviewed, this thing has the same DJI driver assistance suite. That includes a somewhat incredible level of technology. Not only does this have active safety systems like uh, blind spot monitoring as well as lane keep assist, it also has lane centering with adaptive cruise control, automatic lane changes, automatic parking, and valet park assist. That is, I think you'll agree, a pretty incredible level of technology for such a cheap car. The cloud can be had with one of two different battery packs, either 38 or 51 kilowatt hours with ranges of 360 and 460 kilometers. A charge of 30 to 80% takes a claimed half an hour. That's going to do it for today's review of the Baojun EQ100 electric compact MPV. This thing is an impressive and feature-packed electric vehicle. It doesn't quite have the driving dynamics of something like a BYD Dolphin, but it does outdo it in terms of tech and space.